Hi everyone, it's KK Downing from KK's Priest, and I'm checking out the Jeremy White Show. So you need to do it too. An all new episode of the Jeremy White Show. Available wherever you stream. So today, 33 years ago, Painkiller by Judas Priest unleashed on the world. Yeah. Well, if I had a guitar to hand, I would I'd compliment you with a riff. But Oh, my God. Go grab one. Come on. That, grab a guitar, KK. That, Please. That, that, will, that will be in the other room, won't it? <laughs> we got time. Go grab it. Man, play some, play some I'll riffs. Gra- I'll, I'll grab something. Hopefully yeah. Uh, KK's Priest, man. You guys got to pick up this record. The Sinner Rides Again out September 29th. You can pre-order it now via Napalm Records, wherever you get your music. You can pre-order the CD, you get the vinyl, you got all kinds of great merch, you catch them on the road. Uh, they got gigs all the way through, through the end of October, and uh going to be great. Oh, look at that, we got the white oh, flying yeah, feet. This is the new KK model here, but no amplifier. Oh, I can't hear it. Wait, you got to put, put it closer, put it closer. Where's the mic? It might work now. <laughs> but anyway, like, there it is. This is this is the newest, latest one, all the way from San Diego. So, but anyway, happy anniversary, Painkiller. Uh, just talk a little bit about Painkiller for a second, because first of all, that was the first record with with Scott on drums. Was that an intentional statement for you guys to say, okay, we got a new drummer, we need to put something out there that's just going to blow everybody's faces off and say this is the new sound behind the kit? Yeah, I think so. I think the, with the addition of Scott, because he, we knew his capabilities from his former band, Razor X, which were a great band, you know. And uh, um, But Scott had all of this, um, you know, uh, after, after so many years, having Scott in the band with those double kicks, uh, kicks again, I mean, he just gave us... Uh, uh, it just opened doors for myself and Glenn to write rhythmically, musically, you know, to, um, and we knew that Scott could play anything that we could, uh, as fast as we could play on guitar, we knew he could, uh, it could match us, you know, on, uh, on the kit, which was, uh, which helped a lot really, because it meant we could, uh, expand our writing after so many years, really, you know, in, res- in respect of, uh, you know, the fast, the, the uh, the faster side of metal, if you like. Yeah, a song like that, Painkiller. What comes first, that drum intro or the the guitar intro? I think probably then, um, like you know, my style and technique. You know, I will start with a, a good strong chorus, but um, um, back then, the writing process we all used to like disappear. You know, prob- usually to different countries and put lots of musical ideas down. So I would put a lot of guitar ideas down. Glenn would do the same. Rob would draft up some lyrics. Then we would all come together to see what we got, you know. And so lots of times a song could start with a guitar riff, you know, or a chord sequence. And that could be melodic, it could be blistering fast, or, you know, or sometimes Rob might just uh, hand over a song title and maybe that might inspire us. You know, but it could come from any direction, any source, really. You know, um, whereas with myself, I just think I can do it faster and more methodical and just pump it all out. You know, if I start with a strong title and then look for a good sub-chorus, you know, to lead into that. And that would, you know, uh, give me the inspiration for the, the storyline and, and all of the music. To follow go blast painkiller today because it's the anniversary the anniversary yeah i'll do it right now myself <laughs> do you have any fun still, still remember the chops yeah do you, do you have any fond memories of recording that record just specifically because it's the anniversary uh, yeah we were in the south of france which was great um it was in a very remote place beautiful studio um i think brad pitt owns it now um, I think Brad Pitt um, and someone else uh, took over the studio, bought the oh, studio. Wow. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, we had a great time. Um, it was, like I said, it was remote, 
but we got on with it. Um, yeah, we had a lot of fun. We had some good times doing that, you know, but we were, we got stuck in, really. We had a lot of work to do, um, and we and we did it. And uh, and Chris Tangaridis came down to produce that album. Um, you know, wonderful producer, author. How was it working with him? Was he tough in the studio? No, no, he was, he was sweet. He was, uh, you know, but uh, he was a good producer, Chris. Yeah. And recording had come such a long way at that time, too. I mean, just sonically, like that record just sounds so big, like the drums and even the guitar tones. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we were fortunate on that record because I think we managed to get a guitar sound pretty much straight away, which was great because a lot of other studios, you have to really fight for it, you know. Um, but we didn't realize how, for many years, how, uh, uh, what such a big effect of the preamps in the desk um, played a massive part, you know. And that's why some studios, you'd go in and straight away, the guitar sound sounded good and you just got on with it. For other studios, you have to really, really work tremendously hard, you know. Yeah. I mean, the guitar amp through an SM57 into a Neve or an SSL is going to sound completely different in the Bahamas versus yeah. in south of France. Yeah. So a Neve, Trident, an old Focusrite, anything like that, your guitar sounds going to sound great. They've got a big old, a lot of them have got those, you know, nice valve preamps, you know. Yeah. Was your was your recording technique always just you know like an SM fifty seven right in front of the cone or? Well, we would multiple mic cabinets, you know, um, you know have uh, mics at uh, you know room mics, you know, but we had close mics also. I mean, studios have got tons of mics, so why wouldn't you put four or five on a cab? We did, yeah. you know. I agree. Uh, yeah, please give the message to all of our fans in Canada. Thank you so much for being patient. Uh, but we're ready now to rock. We're ready to go out the door at the drop of a hat. So if the promoters want to bring us to Canada, you know, great metal territory, please do. And we'll see you real soon, you guys. Yeah, we're looking forward to getting you up here in Montreal. That will be fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, before we go, could you just cut a quick ID? Uh, just saying... Well, um, you're checking out the Jeremy White show. Do you hey do do you remember your guitar rig what you, what you used on Painkiller when you guys recorded that? Um Yeah, that would have been the same setup really. You know, myself and and Glenn um you know for many years we didn't we didn't change um and that's why I guess it defined the Judas Priest sound, really, you know. Mm. Um, but even now, if I if I do plug into some new gear, my ears automatically are searching for that sound that I can hear, you know, mm. inside. So um, if you can hear it with with the stuff that's around now, you can tune it in pretty close to uh, on, on pretty much everything, you know. Um, yeah. But you have to hear it, don't you? Because it is in the ears and and the hands, I think, just as much as it is in the equipment. I think, and a lot of guitarists will say it, 90% of the tone is right here. In the hands. I, I think Eddie said that, you know, I mean, and I think he's probably, I think he's right, you know. I swear, if Eddie had have ever plugged into my rig, I'm sure he would have sounded just like Eddie Van Halen, you know. <laughs> And vice versa. Yeah. Plugging into Ed's, uh, you know, those Marshalls or the 5150s, you know. D did you ever try the 5150 amps? Have you ever tried those? Um, I can't say I did, actually. You know, there's so much gear lying around, isn't it? Isn't there, you know. In yeah. every time, if you do go to a studio these days, there's, 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 you know, there's tons of amps, so whatever's lying around, you know. But, but like I say, I think I can pretty much dial in my the tone that i want with pretty much everything really right 
through the eighties recording, just because we're talking about recording it, and we said bye already, but now we're still going. Uh, I, I'm curious, did, did you guys ever use like any type of programming in the studio, like Fairlights or Synclaviers or anything like that? It was always just live the band off the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love to hear that. That's awesome. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think would have happened had you guys worked with a producer like Mutt Lang or? You know, like like a Bob Rock or Bruce Fairburn. Do you, do you think that would have changed? What What do you think that would have done to the band sound? Well, that's a good question. Nobody's ever asked me that before, really. But um, producers certainly, you know, have the potential to to change a band completely, especially people like Mutt Lang, as you say. You know, um, he obviously knew what he wanted to to get from Def Leppard. Um, yeah, producers can have a profound effect on, you know, a band's sound and potentially direction as well. Did the producers you guys worked with through the years, like, have that effect on you? Or has the sound just always been Judas Priest? Yeah, no, myself, my, my, Glenn and myself, we were always there. We were, we were always there for every note that was ever played or mixed, you know, always there. Uh, we had a pretty good idea of what we wanted, really, and uh, we were pretty uh, uh, as one in respect of that, I think, really. Right. Well, that's awesome. Most, yeah. Well, um, listen, this is this is great. The Sinner Rides Again, KK's Priest, available wherever you get your music, September 29th. You can go and pre-order that now. Go watch the great videos online, see the band live, and Make sure you follow all of their socials and um, go blast painkiller today because it's the anniversary. The anniversary. Yeah. I'll do it right now myself. An all new episode of the Jeremy White Show. Available wherever you stream.